Can you see that recording thing come up? Yep. Yes, here we go. Hello and welcome everyone. Um, we're here today to discuss the New South Wales Wild Dog Fence Extension Project and in particular the development of the Environmental Impact Statement. I'm Justin Schick, the Project Manager, and I'm joined today by members of the project team. Uh, Liz Matheson will be talking about biodiversity and cultural heritage assessments and legislative legislation that the project will be following through the phasing plan and I'll just give a minor update on the project and a, and a basic overview. Um, I'll just share my screen with everyone. Got a confirmation there Liz. Yes. Thank you. Um, so the Wild dogs have, significant, have a significant impact on livestock and native fauna and restrict production options in many areas. Um, the economic impact of wild dogs is estimated to be $111 million, which um, 22 million of that is attributed to New South Wales. Um, there's evidence that suggests wild dogs are increasing through some parts of New South Wales. Um, the current wild dog fence um, runs along the border the South Australia and Queensland border, it's about 583 kilometres long. We intend to extend the fence by 322 kilometres on the South Australian border from the existing fence to just short of the Murray River and also on the uh, Queensland border, 420 kilometre extension from the end of the existing fence near Hungerford through to Mungandai, uh, which will bring it up to roughly 1,300 kilometres or a little more. That's a map of the of where it is, the yellow is is uh, the current fence and the red is the intended extension um, through down here to the Murray River and across to Mungandai in the east. Um, the feasibility study was commissioned um, by the Border Fence Maintenance Board and funded by the LLS, um, which had determined a great deal of benefits to extending the fence. Um, there's a, you know some additional flow on benefits if, roughly $16.2 million of flow on effects um, through the, the uh, supply chain and customer output, uh, consumer outputs. The, it should create up to around 85 jobs through direct end supply chain and flow on effects, as well as additional jobs to manage the extended fence and to, to do the maintenance. Um, the proposed extension will deliver social and environmental benefits, including employment, um, reduce social impacts and psychological stress, animal welfare concerns, and increase biodiversity. Uh, this was an election, election commitment from the New South Wales Liberal and National Governments. Um, it was announced in February 2019. Um, it was also backed up by the Labor Party and the Fisheries Party. Shooters and Fisheries Party. This is the fence that we intend to build generally most of the way. Um, it'll be 300 mil deep into the ground, 600 mil above ground with uh, 50 by 50 chain mesh, um, plastic coated fencing. And then from 300 mil above ground through to 1800 mil above ground will be 15, 150, 15 exclusion mesh, um, which will be held up by these maxi posts or, or the large star picket posts every five metres. Um, in some places, it'll through through the flood areas, there'll be a um, different type of fence which just lays on the ground, as you can see here in the photo with this, what we call a sawtooth effect with floats. It'll float up from roughly 300 mil above ground so to let water and, and, uh, and debris um, flow through underneath. And then once the water is recited, it'll sit back down flat on the ground and the, and the floats will then become weights and weigh the fence down to stop anything going underneath. Um, the progress to date, construction for the first pilot site near Hungerford has commenced. There's 15 kilometres of pilot site up there, which is about 12 and a half kilometres complete. The pilot site's just a trial, so it can, it'll help us with our overall planning and just making sure everything um, is correct and iron out any any issues or dramas that we have with any of our 
anything really to do with the with the construction. Um, Aboriginal cultural heritage and biodiversity assessments are currently taking place on the Queensland and South Australian borders. Liz will follow up a little more on that. Um, and obviously a lot of community updates are around. Um, just keep everyone up to date with what's happening with the project. Um, there is a construction tender coming out. Hopefully we'll be released in the coming weeks. Just working on that now to get it get it sorted out for the next lot or the main lot of construction. Um, so we aim we aim to maximise the economic benefits to Western New South Wales and just by local by using local suppliers and contractors and engaging local businesses wherever possible, working with the landholders and small businesses and Aboriginal participation and short term job creation is a priority for the project. Uh, the Aboriginal Cultural Heritage Surveys is, is currently being completed along the Queensland border as we speak. Thank you very much for listening to me at this stage. It will go back to Liz and she will take over. Thanks, Liz. Thank you, Justin. Um, while I'm sharing my screen, I am Liz Matheson. I work for Public Works Advisory and we have been engaged to prepare the environmental assessment for this work. So essentially the environmental assessment has been split into the two separate um, components being South Australia and Queensland and we will be following the relevant state legislation and seeking the appropriate approvals under each state depending on the location of the fence alignment. We will also be seeking Commonwealth approval as required where there is a or a potential significant impact on a matter of national environmental significance. So as I said, the environmental assessment is in progress and we have engaged um, consultants to undertake the detailed biodiversity and heritage assessments for the um, environmental impact assessment. The biodiversity surveys have recently been completed along the South Australia alignment and there's an expectation or that the Queensland alignment will, surveys will commence in mid-January. Uh, initial findings have identified a number of threatened state and Commonwealth listed species along the alignments, which will actually be impacted. The nature of these impacts will range from direct impacts associated with the loss of habitat through vegetation um, clearing and construction time, as well as the entrapment of animals as they try to pass through the fence. There will also be indirect barrier impacts associated with the loss of movement um, of species across the landscape for habitat resources such as food and water, as well as breeding potential and blockage of migration pathways. The main impacts will be caused to mid-sized to large ground dwelling species with some of the smaller species able to fit through the fence while other species are able to climb and birds are obviously able to fly. Uh, the biodiversity assessment will identify uh, mitigation measures to try and minimise any impacts to uh, flora and fauna species. And some of those uh, measures may include maximising the visibility of the fence so that um, animals do not run into it, especially when it's newly constructed creating shelters or refuges for um, smaller animals to escape predators, installing tunnels underneath the fence. The most important thing will be the monitoring of the effectiveness of these um, mitigation measures So, and, and the implementation of new measures if we find that these ones aren't actually um, working. From a heritage point of view, we are also currently working with registered Aboriginal parties, traditional landowners and native title holders across the three states. Um, we have recently completed the initial survey of the South Australia alignment, where we have identified a number of high Aboriginal sensitivity uh, locations for which further testing will be required. And that testing will be carried out in conjunction with the Aboriginal representatives as well as the relevant legislation. Uh, other issues for consideration in the environmental assessment include uh, flooding, particularly along the Queensland alignment, soil erosion and sand movement given the environment that we're working in, access being both property access and the movement of stock between um, properties um, and access during construction, 
as well as water use and quality and management of the waste materials. And we are aiming to have the environmental assessments completed by early to mid-2021, after which we can commence construction. Over to you, Justin. Thank you. Thanks very much, Liz. Do appreciate it. Um, so we'd love to hear from hear your thoughts and comments uh, on the development of the environmental impact statement and the project overall. Um, but, so please remember the um, 18th of December deadline for that. Um, and that's about it from us. And thank you very much for listening. Stop recording.